If you're looking to pick a new Toyota Tundra and tow with it, it can be a little daunting to figure out which one you really, really want. This is Out Motorsports, the channel for cars as you are. My name is Jake, and while I've driven and towed with several brand new Toyota Tundras over the last few years, I've always thought that the ones that Toyota sent me were not quite what I would want to make the actual ultimate towing Tundra. But this time we're here with the 2024 Toyota Tundra Platinum, and there's a few reasons why I think this one might be one of the better specs to get if you're towing toward the top of its rated range. So I've driven two of these Tundras before. I drove a Tundra 1794 edition, and then I drove a Tundra TRD Pro, and I towed with both of them. On the 1794 edition, that one was a twin turbo V6 without the hybrid setup, but it had a street focus suspension and street focus tires. So I had half of the equation there. Then I drove a Tundra TRD Pro, which had the hybrid drivetrain that I really liked, but it had the softer off-road focus suspension, which didn't really do as well as I thought it could with a trailer, but that's not really the point of that truck. So here we have a Tundra Platinum. Now this one is going to be that iForce Max hybrid drivetrain, and it's gonna have the street focus suspension and the highway tires. So that is why I think this one is going to be kind of the winner of the three that I've driven so far. And if you're towing heavy, you want all of these things. So. First things first, let's talk about the drivetrain. So every Tundra is going to start with a 3.4 liter twin turbo V6, but when you get the hybrid, you get this kind of pancake shaped electric motor that goes in the transmission's bell housing and gives you another 48 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque all on its own. You can't necessarily just add that to what the gas motor puts out to get a figure because the electric motor only helps out. It'll let you run the truck on electric power only for very brief periods of time. But in general, you've got 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque all in from the combined propulsion systems. That is quite a bit. And that all flows through a 10-speed automatic transmission, pretty typical transmission that the electric motor can use all the gears of, and then regular four-wheel drive with high and low range and an automatic limited slip rear differential. So drivetrain rise, you've got quite a bit going on that's just a lot of power, a lot of torque that should be really, really ample. Now then suspension-wise, you've got, again, a few options here. So like I said, with the TRD Pro, Toyota's giving you those Fox shocks, a little bit softer spring rate, all these things to give the truck some decent chops off-road and a decent ride off-road. Now, softness is great, but you don't necessarily want that for towing a trailer. You want the best body control you can have. And that's gonna come in with shock damping settings, that's going to come in with spring rate, and it's gonna come in with tires. So with that, you want a more street-focused setup. Now, in this case, we've got that street-focused setup here. This particular Tundra Platinum does not have the load leveling rear end or the adaptive variable suspension. That's gonna be shock absorbers that can get stiffer or softer based on your drive mode. But either way, this one's gonna be about as ideal as it gets for towing. Now, the interesting thing is this one's not the one rated to tow the most amount of weight. Toyota actually says the TRD Pro can tow more, but either way, in the real world, I'd rather be doing it with a stiffer street-focused suspension and tire setup, so I wanna focus on this guy. So this is rated for just shy of 11,000 pounds of trailer weight, which I do think is really plenty. And Toyota says it's rated for about 1,500 pounds of payload. Of course, we wanna always check inside that driver's door jam to see what it is actually rated for. And in this case, that's why we always check, it is rated for 1,290 pounds of payload. So of course, the options that you pick on your specific Tundra will impact the payload compared to what Toyota says it can do just a little bit. So 1290 is still pretty decent. Now, what we're gonna be towing today is my 20-foot enclosed trailer. It is an aluminum design. It has a four-foot V-nose. Total length is about 27 feet, and it weighs about 7,000 pounds all loaded up. So with about a 10% tongue weight, we still have plenty of room in here for occupants and cargo. Now, I don't have any friends, so it's just going to be me riding in here with a bag for the weekend, but let's get behind the wheel, head to Virginia International Raceway for the NASA Mid-Atlantic season opener with my Spec 3 BMW race car. This is going to be the one that I think is the best. So far, my theory is holding water, and that is because you've got the best drivetrain possible that fills in any and all power and torque gaps, and then you've got the most street-focused suspension. So with that drivetrain, you've got two turbochargers, you've got the hybrid electric motor set up, that motor is, like I said, in the bell housing. It's kind of this pancake style motor, so it can use all eight gears. Now, when you're driving this truck around town with nothing put on the hitch, 
it acts kind of like a big Prius. It can't get you going very fast or very far on battery power alone. It only makes 48 horsepower and about 184 pound-feet of torque uh, with the electric motor, and it's a tiny, tiny battery under the back seats. But it is enough to get you going away from a stop to kind of assist that gas motor, so you'll see it kind of spool in at 2,000 RPM or so as you've brought up your speed just a touch. And then also, even at highway speeds, it'll let the gas motor cut off if you're going downhill, if you're coasting, if you're slowing down, whatever, in a city environment or on the highway. So you do save little bits of gas there. But when you're towing, the more important part is that you've got your turbos, which do spool, and you have plenty of, of torque and horsepower from those, but the electric motor kind of fills in any teeny little gaps that you might otherwise have. And what you'll notice with that is less about the actual feel if you're just staring out the windshield, but if you keep your eyes on the gauge cluster here and there, when you put your foot in it, you've got an I-Force gauge, which is the turbos, and a Max gauge, which is the electric motor, and you'll see them kind of do this dance up and down, where as the turbo spools, before it can really peak with, with how much boost it's making, you'll see the electric motor come in somewhere between, you know, 20 to 50 to 100 percent, and it's just a little brief burst of acceleration and, and you know added torque through the extra uh, EV setup but it is still really helpful so that I think makes all the difference it is a noticeable difference in towing behavior to me versus the turbo only motor which they call the iForce so I really like the drivetrain in this it's paired to the 10-speed automatic you've got two tow modes here you've got a regular tow haul and then a tow plus they're really just based on how much weight you're pulling and because I'm over 5,000 pounds everything is turned all the way up so uh, it's doing fine the only complaint that I have which is still from every other current gen Tundra that I've driven um, there's not a lot of automatic downshifting for engine braking when you are hard on the brakes I don't really love that I wish they would do a little bit more you can click this over to manual mode and shift it yourself if you really want to so going down big hills or something you do have that control I just wish they would do it a little bit better Ford is still the the lead for me as far as who does it the best in their tow mode if you had the adaptive variable suspension on this truck that would also get a little stiffer in that tow plus mode to help with body control and trailer control. Now this truck does not have it. It's got your fixed rate damper set up. So is it too soft? No, I think it actually handles things really well. I'm really pleased with how it's handling this trailer. Like I said, I've got weight distribution going. I do have some stuff in the bed. I've got 20 gallons of gas in some jugs. I've got some used tires. You know, there's a little bit of weight back there, but it is doing a really nice job. It feels a little soft without the trailer, but with everything hooked up and, you know, on the move here at highway speeds, it's doing a really good job. And then suspension wise, you know, this one doesn't have the adaptive variable suspension. So it's got fixed rate dampers and it does not have the rear load leveling. Uh, so, do you need that? I don't necessarily think so. I've really been sitting with this over the last couple hours. I've had plenty of time to think. This is a long tow. And uh, I think, you know, it would be nice to have, but I don't think it's mandatory. I think if you really, really want everything on your truck, then sure. But if you're willing to consider your load, use weight distribution, get everything set up properly instead of just slamming a trailer on the hitch and walking away, which is not a good idea no matter what you're towing with, this is doing a very good job. It's got plenty of body control. I feel very confident. No issues passing semi trucks, you know, splitting the difference between two semi trucks on, on, you know, a bigger highway, whatever. It's just doing a nice job. So good uh, body control, good suspension control. I think I'm fine with what this setup is. So yes, this is the best setup of the, the Tundras I've towed with so far. I think adding the adaptive variable suspension and the load leveling would go a little bit further, but I don't think you have to have it. So granted, you can't get the iForce Max hybrid drivetrain on the lower end Tundras. You have to step up toward the top of the trim range either way. So if you're spending 65, 70 grand, okay, what's another three grand to add that all in, 3,500 bucks, whatever it is, sure. But you know, if you're really trying to make sure you're you're not spending way too much, then do you have to have that? No, I don't think so. As far as other towing stuff going on here, this truck tows well. You know, the, the drivetrain is really, really nice. Uh, braking performance is excellent. The brake pedal feels really good, you know, on initial bite. And then as you work through the pedal travel, uh, you do have a built-in trailer brake controller. It's right down here. Um, so controlling the electric brakes on the trailer, no big deal. Um, it's generally, this is a really good tow vehicle. The, my, my, my issues that I have as far as feedback, if you will, uh, are more with the interior of the truck. Um, I, I still think the dashboard is a little too high versus the seating position. The seating position is good for a tall person. I just think the dash is kind of high. I don't need a 14 inch screen over here. This is way too big for me. Like how big do you really need Google Maps? But um, 
this is all minor stuff in the grand scheme of things. The seat is comfortable. Everything in this one is heated and ventilated on the four outboard seats, so that's nice if you've got passengers. The sound system in here is pretty good, 12-speaker JBL system. You've got a digital gauge cluster, which I do think makes good use of the pixels. Not every digital cluster does that, and this one, I think, is pretty nice. You've got plenty of information. It's easy to read at a glance. And this truck does not have a heads-up display. It's an option on the Platinum, but uh, you can have a HUD. I've, I've used them before. It's, it's a nice thing to have, but I don't necessarily need it again on this truck. I think the way this one is spec'd is pretty close to how I'd want one if I were buying. Uh, the only thing they really added to this is power running boards. So otherwise, you know, plenty of storage space. You've got some cup holders, a wireless charger. You've got a huge center console here. This little center tray slides uh, so you can access things without opening the entire armrest bit, which is nice. If you've got a passenger and everyone's got their arms right here, you can just slide this open and get your phone, your sunglasses, whatever. And then plenty of storage on the door pockets. This is a good road tripper. It's a great tow vehicle. I'm really enjoying it. And, you know, I finally feel like I've got the one where the drivetrain and the suspension and everything is working together as best it can. I thought the 1794 without the hybrid bits was nice and towed fine, but I wanted a little bit more out of the drivetrain. And then the TRD Pro had the drivetrain and I just thought it was a little soft and you know could have handled the trailer with a teeny bit more grace. Now, keep in mind, these are kind of nitpicky comments, but if you are buying a new truck, these are all expensive and you want the one that is going to be you know, your long-term investment, you're keeping it for a while, you want it to just be the best tow vehicle for a race car trailer, a camper, an RV, you know, a big boat, whatever. Something like this is gonna be much more at home with a trailer on the back of it versus something like a TRD Pro. Now, if you're gonna be off-roading and you occasionally wanna tow something, yeah, TRD Pro is gonna be just fine. But this, I think, is doing a really nice job. I am uh, a big fan of it as far as performance is concerned. Obviously, interiors are subjective, the looks are subjective, you know, go, poke around, see what you like, but I am really, really fond of how this is doing. All right, and that is it for this review, towing with the 2024 Toyota Tundra Platinum. As always, thank you so much for coming along for the ride. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe right here on YouTube. Give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Outmotorsports. Head over to Outmotorsports.com if you're looking to connect with other LGBT automotive enthusiasts and amateur motorsports competitors. We've got a bunch of events coming up both on the racetrack and on the street. We would love to have you for any and all of that. We've got a big community here online. We'd love to have you join in all the fun there as well. So hopefully we'll see you at one or more of those events. Otherwise, stay safe, be well, see you for the next one.